Well, one year after the goods and services tax, the big tax reform was implemented in the country, across the country. It is being hailed as a landmark tax reform, certainly by many experts and by the government, of course, which celebrated that first anniversary over the weekend, claiming its huge success. But there are others, including experts and, of course, the opposition that say it's not quite worked out the way that it should have. And here to talk to us about that is the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog, uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar. Uh, Mr. Kumar, thank you for joining us on NDTV today. Uh, looking at the way GST was implemented and, and one year since it was implemented, can I first ask you what you think are the shortcomings and where we need to do better? Before I talk to you about the shortcomings, Nidhi, uh, let me men let me sort of just mention that in every other country which has implemented the, the GST, it has taken at least two years for it to stabilize, and and this is a this is a fact that you can check. So compared with that yardstick, we haven't done badly at all, and uh, the fact that we've got the tax base going up from 67 lakhs to uh, to one 1 1.1 crore of the indirect tax, I think is testimony. Uh, to the huge achievement of the GST in formalizing the economy. And that's, th that's the major achievement. On uh, where we could have done better, uh, clearly uh, there are some issues uh, with uh, uh, the GST's impact on exporters uh, because there is the issue of refund of the input tax credit for the exporters and the time that it is taken is being sorted out. And there is the issue also of the uh, EUA bill uh, as to how it is being uh, implemented and the fact that uh, uh, the invoices, the invoice matching is, uh, is, is, yet to, uh, is yet to happen. But all these, I'm, I'm told, all these three are being now addressed by the GST and Council and the, and, and the concerned department and we should see, uh, we should overcome them very soon. Well, uh, you know, Ar Ar Arvind Subramaniam's, you know, biggest criticism, if as uh, you know, if, uh, uh, for want of a better word, of the GST has been that 28% slab, and he has been saying that you know uh, it is time to remove that slab. And in fact, he had argued in the beginning as well that perhaps the GST structure was a little too complicated. He always wanted fewer slabs. Looking back on on the way things have gone in the last year, do you think that the government should have taken his advice right at the beginning? I, I, with all due respect to Arvind, I, I, I disagree on that because I think, um, um, you know, just for the reason of revenue neutrality, uh, you couldn't have a single tax. Also for reasons of equity, you couldn't have a single tax. And the, and the, and the perception of equity about, you know, luxuries that you know are luxuries and non-merit goods like liquor and cigarettes being taxed at the same rate as, for example, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals or, or daily necessities uh, would have not gone down, would not have gone down well at all uh, with the Indian po population. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's very well to cite uh, theoretical re reasons and the first best models uh, for, for, uh, for any, uh, any policy measure, but we have to ground it in our own realities. And so I think, uh, you know, the present structure has served us well. However, I do think that we need to collapse it uh, in a two-rate two, uh, structure or a maximum three-rate stru three structure actually uh, going forward, a zero, a middle level, and then one for luxuries and non-merit goods. <laughs> Mr. Chidambaram, the former finance minister, though, is, is extremely critical of the way GST has been implemented. I wanted to ask you about that. He says GST has become a bad word among people. The design, the structure, the, the rates, etc. are so flawed that business, businesses, traders, exporters and common citizens, uh, you know, call it a bad word. Now, is there's some truth in that to the extent, as you mentioned, exporters yourself, but also small businesses have taken a big hit as a, as a result of this as well. I'm sure you would agree that those are issues, as you acknowledged yourself earlier, need to be addressed more quickly. Yeah, you know, but um, I'm afraid um, Mr. Chidambaram is now beginning to sound more and more as if he's in the support of those who have been evading taxes and those who don't want to be formalized or those who, those who want to remain outside the tax net. And I, I wish he hadn't said that. But if he wants to increase his vocabulary of bad words, 
uh, this is just a three letter word and not a four one. So I suggest to him that he drops it. All right. But uh, let me take this opportunity, Mr. Kumar, to also just ask you a couple of questions, you know, on, on the state of the economy and, and not just on GST. There was a report today quoting the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion about FDI inflows of foreign direct investment in India, uh, actually saying that it's petering out and uh, you uh, you know foreign outflows grew by some 8.76% earlier uh, but the negative growth has has gone up to 38% uh, you know what what do these statistics tell you uh, you know is there some uncertainty negative in our growth? fdi what is policy the this is a report that's come out in one of the newspapers today uh, i am afraid i haven't seen this report and the last, uh, the last uh, set of statistics that I had was that in the last four years, FDI has increased by something like 41% as compared to 14% in the four years prior to that. So I'm, I, I, and I've just been to the UK, and I see that the India story still holds good uh, as far as the foreign investor is concerned. Uh, uh, you know, there is an issue of, there is no doubt an issue of portfolio investments having flown back in the last eight weeks, uh, simply because of the Fed rate hike and because of what you can call, you know, the U.S. Uh, the asynchronous uh, growth in the U.S. Uh, economy, which has grown much higher. But apart from that, on the FDI story, I'm I'll have a look at the DIPP story, but I don't think it's petering out yet. Okay, but well, what the story basically says is that FDI inflows and, you know, have, have come to their one? lowest in five years in in this financial year that the growth rate of FDI, of foreign direct investment into India, has dipped to a five-year low. That's what the story is saying. That could, uh, I will have a look at it, and I'll, uh, uh, but, but the fact is that the rate of growth has been so high in the last four years that for it to carry on growing at the same rate with a higher base every year, you can imagine would be more difficult. And, you know, so th therefore I don't, uh, you know, I don't sort of, uh, you know, consider that a loss as long as there is a growth, you know, and as long as the five, you know, five year period, the four year period is better than the previous four years. But, you know, uh, we have had record FDI flows now, and I think therefore one should not look at this uh, particular figure and say that we've, we've come into bad times or something like that. All right, well, quite well, the experts quoted here are worried. They're saying that uh, domestic investments need to be revived. Ease of doing business needs needs to be strengthened. But let me ask you a final question, Mr. Kumar. Are you are you worried about what's happening with the rupee? Because it's certainly a big concern. We've seen the rupee touch its lowest mark last week. Yeah. So three uh, short answers to you. One, of course, the ease of business must be improved, especially in the states where the rubber meets the road. Uh, second, uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the FDI on, on the state of the economy, you must have just seen the figure that the manufacturing PMI is about I think it is three year high at 53 in this last month. So that the manufacturing has seen a smart jump and therefore means that the economy is recovering. And on the rupee depreciation, you know it still remains relatively overvalued by about four or five percent compared to our real effective exchange rate. Uh, with 32, bar, 32 currencies. So therefore, I'm not worried at all about the, and, and thankfully for us, the oil prices have softened uh, so that we are not getting a double whammy of a rising oil price and a declining rupee. So to that extent, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not very worried at all. All right, Rajiv Kumar, the Vice Chairman of the NITI-IO, giving us the government's perspective there on where things stand today. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, sir.